Welcome back. You're watching us live from Broadcasting House. O'Brien Kimani is my name and this is Base Check, where we are keeping tabs of different business uh, happenings around the country, as well as uh, our political intrigues. The BBI presentation of uh, signatures to IBC is currently underway. The terrain, according to the uh, owners of the project, has already kicked off or have left, ha, has uh, left the station. It is on way to uh, IBC headquarters along uh, University Way here in Nairobi. It is necking its way through uh, various roads from State House Road. And, of course, you'd expect uh, that uh, they should be getting to IBC any time from now. It's a huge uh, procession, and so you would expect uh, a little bit of uh, grid, uh, gridlock around uh, the areas that uh, they will be going through. And so our reporter, Suleiman Yeri, is keeping tabs of that train. He's updating us on who is on board and who has been left behind and what they are doing to see whether they can uh, jump on board. As of yesterday, according to the Secretariat, three million uh, signatures have so far been collected. And so the uh, process of verifying and authenticating those uh, signatures is expected to start officially today at the uh, IEBC uh, headquarters. It's going to be uh, such an exercise. Uh, definitely. And so we also be alerting you on where we go to next. And remember the floating bridge that has been under construction uh, uh, around uh, uh, or at the uh, Likoni Channel. It's complete. It's supposed to be uh, commissioned by President Uhuru Kenyatta. We'll be giving you an update uh, once we get some from uh, Mombasa. Yeah, because our reporters are also there and trying to see what exactly is happening around uh, uh, the floating bridge. It's quite an interesting concept. And so we'll be opening your world to have a look at it you know, once we have that link. We have been discussing uh, the issues around mitigating against uh, poverty as well as urban hunger. And time now to shift gears and, of course, look at another subject. Credit in the pandemic, in the midst of a pandemic. If I can uh, give you give you some uh, heads up. Uh, since the outbreak of uh, coronavirus in Kenya, in the month of March, the government uh, directed bank to uh, 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 or issued a moratorium on loan repayment. And according to the Central Bank of Kenya, close to 70% of borrowers uh, tapped or uh, 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 um, en enrolled for a uh, loan moratorium, whereby they were seeking for a renegotiation of uh, their loan repayment period. This has somehow, uh, of course, has triggered another impact on banks when you look at their uh, 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 revenue from interest rate it has somehow plunged by more than 70 percent and of course uh, we expect uh, uh, them to uh, uh, continue urging the government to lift this and of course this was done you know sometimes in November so we are expecting uh, uh, to see uh, banks of course embarking on an aggressive uh, loan uh, repayment uh, campaign Joining us in the studio this morning is uh, uh, the CEO of uh, Jijenga Credit Limited. It's a non, it's a, it's a, it's a non deposit taking microfinance based here in Nairobi. They have been around for the last seven years. And I was talking to the CEO, he was telling me that uh, they have so far managed to give loans to the tune of around half a billion shillings. That's quite significant, you know, bearing in mind that uh, it's not a big uh, 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 microfinance. Let's get straight to him. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Masharia, for finding time to be with us here. Paint for us a picture of how the credit market looks like uh, and how you are coping with uh, the current uh, environment. Thank you, Obrian, for inviting me to the studios today. And uh, in a nutshell, the credit market within the Kenyan uh, and African uh, region 
is uh, going through tough time, tough times. But uh, most of the organizations and uh, the partners that handle uh, the credit uh, protocols are up to the task. We as as Jijenge Credit are also very resilient. And uh, as we go through this turbulence, we are. This is a time now that uh, you pull all the skills, the knowledge, the expertise that you know to help navigate uh, the organization to great heights and ensure that uh, the decisions that are made and uh, are, are, are proper decisions and and uh, collections are done on time and uh, any challenge that customers face are mitigated on, on, on time before they can uh, turn into what we call bad debts. Yes. Uh, you know, since uh, <coughs> the first case of COVID-19 was reported in Kenya in March, mm -hmm. uh, how much have you managed to lend? Uh, thank you. Uh, lending has been going on normally. However, and uh, ordinarily what happens, as you know, most Kenyans don't, uh, don't save. So the lending has, uh, the demand has been there. But uh, as an organization that is uh, well managed, we have a very elaborate and stringent credit analysis system that ensures that uh, as much as uh, people or borrowers might need money, we avoid lending to uh, borrowers who, who, are, who don't even have a repayment plan. Because after March, uh, so many things happened, like uh, retrenchments were put into place. Uh, most employers put their staff on half pay, or they even uh, declared their staff redundant because of uh, businesses that uh, were closing. And uh, all that, when put into place, automatically shifts demand for, for, for loans into a high gear. But the question is, how will you repay? That's the question that you have that, been battling that, with. Yeah, that's the question. So what yeah. are your uh, uh, screening processes to ensure that uh, you do not lock out, you know, uh, deserving uh, uh, loan cases? Well, the screening process is quite elaborate and uh, quite wide. But, uh, of course, the bottom line is uh, you have to show proof that either you are still in employment or even if you're in employment, are your terms still the same? Have they been uh, varied? Have, you, have, have they been renegotiated? Because uh, you'll uh, bear me witness that most organizations, actually they didn't sack their staff, but they came up with a, 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 a work from home uh, salary package that uh, was lower than the previous package. So those, uh, we, we need to have systems, or rather we put it in place systems that enable us to go beyond that kind of uh, contract. Because the contracts were never redone. Mm -hmm. It was just a local arrangement that now we would, we would be working from home. Instead of you working for 30 days, come for 15 days. But that one also translates into half pay. So we've been having very detailed uh, analysis to help us uh, now repackage a facility that suits lower incomes. But, but what we have learned with uh, COVID-19 is that, um, you know, having a job is not a guarantee that uh, tomorrow you have uh, a seamless uh, flow of income. And if you interact with the data from uh, the Kenya National Bureau of Statistics, they will tell you that uh, 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 in the period between April this year and September this year, 1.7 million Kenyans you know, have so far been left redundant, uh, redundant uh, 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 and, and, and layoffs. Uh, so, uh, how then do you improve your screening processes, you know, to capture the uh, 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 current scenario? Uh, thanks. Thank you. Uh, what you've said is indeed a fact. Around 2 million Kenyans have been uh, uh, laid off. Actually, they are in unemployment. And uh, now out of those 2 million Kenyans, of course, there are those ones who would like to borrow. But uh, we've been uh, working through with them, especially the ones who are running facilities with us. We've been telling them, now it's a time to think outside the box. Or rather, it's a time to think without the box. If you are relying on employment, 
And maybe you are skilled uh, uh, baker. It's now a high time to now go to the basics. Use the skills that you have to generate some income. Mm -hmm. If you are a driver, can you look for driving a work outside employment? If you, are, you have the cooking skills, you are able to make cakes, can you make cakes at home and sell them within the estate? So it's a time to bring the, in, the innovation in Kenyans. And uh, most of the customers we have and find, found themselves in those situations, we've been offering that service for free. It's a business consultancy service. And it, it has really worked. Because I have a, a, a portfolio, uh, the, our main uh, flagship product is uh, loans against logbooks. And uh, there are those customers who are repaying them with their salaries. Those loans against logbooks from income from employment. When they were retrenched and they came back to our office with those challenges, we told them now, the, this car can help you generate some other source of income. You can do Uber. You can uh, go to the village or some farm and mm -hmm. bring in vegetables. You, could, you might have seen some cars parking along the southern bypass or within the supermarket areas with vegetables at the boot of those cars. Some of those have been our customers and we told them now it's a high time to think outside the box and survive. Mm -hmm. Because by the end of the day, you have a family to feed, you have a loan to repay, and uh, life must continue. That's very true. Yes. Uh, uh, when the government issued a, a, a loan repayment uh, moratorium, how many people uh, did you see applying for, the, uh, for this facility uh, from uh, Jijenge? Well, you can say it's a, you can, I can give a percentage of around 40% of the entire loan book. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually it was higher than 40%, let's say 60. But out of the 60, 20% of uh, those applicants have been uh, servicing their facilities normally. Mm -hmm. They just came to apply just as a stopgap as a, as a stop measure. Yeah. Just in case they are hit by those uh, financial challenges, mm -hmm they have a fallback. But now the other 40% were actually affected by the, the, those uh, issues that you're discussing, uh, job employment uh, uh, losses, business closures, <clears throat> and of course there are some sectors that were heavily affected, like the hotel industry. So those are not the, 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 that percentage, they fall under that category. Mm -hmm. mm. And uh, you know, even before uh, COVID-19, um, you know, Kenya, the banking industry in Kenya was battling uh, with high rates of uh, uh, NPLs or non-performing performing loans, which uh, were almost uh, hitting about 11.5 uh, uh, to 12 percent. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, the situation has become worse because of coronavirus. Mm -hmm. How has been the situation for, 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 for you? Uh, thank you. At Jijenge, we've been uh, having a very elaborate uh, uh, credit uh, system. What I mean by that is that for a loan to turn bad, that means uh, there are some gaps or gray areas that the lender didn't look at. But at Jijenge Credit, we ensure that we do a thorough credit uh, appraisal system, which involves even uh, at times, if you have a business, us visiting there your business so that you can have a good site visit report. But business can collapse. It's true. We have learned this from yes. big companies like yeah. J.C. Penny. It's true. That's a fact. However, you see, when a, a good uh, analyst visits your business, he's able to do all those, we call it a SWOT analysis. He will uh, tell you these are the threats and these are the opportunities. And if there are red flags for, for your business, you 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 give give a feedback to the entire, to the credit committee, and we shall advise the customer on how to nav to navigate that, and th and then also we will also be risk averse. If the client had borrowed a million, we will vary the amount. We will tell him, let's lend you. A, we will start small. <clears throat> you can give him a hundred thousand or two hundred thousand. Then we observe the uh, repayment uh, history, and then from there we can give him a further facility to 
to, to boost up the business. Mm -hmm. yes. So, so have you seen an uptick in um, in a, a default of loan pay repayment? At the, at the jungle, the uptick, uh, or rather the, the increase of uh, the increase of uh, bad debts has been uh, yes, it, it's there, but it's not as high as we, uh, what we can we've been experiencing in the, within our peers and. Uh, if you were to the, assign a percentage, industry. that would be what? We can give it around uh, 15 percent. 15 percent. Yes. The advantage of uh, Jijenge Credit is uh, my historical background. I've been in the banking industry for a cool 25 years. So that wealth of experience, that expertise, that knowledge really helps us to stabilize and foresee and uh, manage those uh, exposures. And uh, that's why even our, our bad debt uh, percentage is very low. Because we, we, we identify those pointers way before things get out of hand, mm -hmm. as opposed to And, and is, this, is this factored in your uh, loan loss uh, provision? Yes, we are within the loan loss provision uh, as per the CBK rules. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we don't exceed. Mm -hmm. yes. And uh, of this for 15 percent, you know, mm -hmm. when you do an analysis of, um, uh, uh, you know, your loan book, mm -hmm. uh, of this 15 percent, which one is likely to be dead debt? Well, uh, we can't call it uh, a dead debt. Eh? Because out of that 15%, those are the uh, industries or the sectors. It constitutes the industries and the sectors that were, were hard hit by the COVID. And uh, our, 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 our loan book concentrates on micro, small, and medium, medium enterprises. And therefore, and these, are the sectors, yeah, those are the risky borrowers. Mm. But uh, the, the, that fifteen percent constitutes, uh, let's say, restaurants, hotels, those home pubs that are usually in estates. But we've been uh, working them hand in hand and advising them to 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 operate without the box. A good example are customers who are in the those uh, estate restaurants. We've uh, told them to repackage their product. Because uh, the curfew times are actually they close at nine, or let's say ten latest. Now we've been uh, we've, uh, we've requested them to even uh, start up new products like home home deliveries, as opposed to waiting for for customers in their restaurants and they won't come because it's a government curfew. So those are the areas that uh, we've been trying to tell them to be innovative and uh, learn to survive. Because by the end of the day. They will need to, January is around the corner. They will need school fees, they need to feed, they need to pay rent, and they need to service the facilities with us. So at Jijenge, we've really tried to walk through and support our customers fully. And uh, therefore, we don't have any debt debt. Very well. Uh, Peter Masharia is the CEO of Jijenge Credit Limited, joining us here on base check to help us understand how the credit market has been impacted by uh, the COVID-19 uh, or the vagaries of COVID-19.